And so you've got to prepare your heart for Ramadan. You have to actually look deeply inside yourself and say, am I going to remove those things that would keep my heart from properly encompassing the beautiful meanings that are encompassed within the rituals of Ramadan rather than satisfy myself with the rituals and not actually treat the heart that the rituals are meant to purify. How do I prepare my heart for Ramadan? Now we know that there is a, a nightly practice that we find from Abdullah bin Amr bin As, may Allah be pleased with him, in the long hadith in which he followed that man home that the Prophet Sallallahu said was a man from paradise. A man walked in, the Prophet Sallallahu said that this man that enters upon you is a man from paradise. And he followed the man home, spent three days with him, saw no extra prayer, saw no extra fasting, saw nothing special in regards to practice. But, but asked him at the end of it, what is it that distinguishes him? And the only thing that he could cite was that every night before he sleeps, not only does he purify his heart and forgive those that he holds a grudge against, but he actually asks Allah to forgive them as well. He actually forces himself to pray for them. So he's, he's not just you know, keeping this in the dimension of thought. He's actually making it a dua that, Oh Allah, forgive that person. Oh Allah, guide that person. Oh Allah, bestow good upon that person. Imagine how happy that man sleeps every single night. Imagine what type of heart that man sleeps with every single night. Imagine how easy his thoughts are every single night because he's brought himself to do that on a nightly basis. So what's going to stop that man from entering into Jannah? The goodness that you'd hope to achieve through prayer and extra fasting of purifying the heart. If you've gotten to a point where you're willing to put yourself through that type of practice every single night, what is going to distract your heart from Allah? Because ultimately that's what these things do. They burden the heart. They take their toll on your heart so that your heart doesn't have any space for your worship. Your heart doesn't have any space for love of Allah because it's too busy hating somebody else. Your heart doesn't have any space for prayer because it's too busy with envy. Your heart doesn't have any place for ibadah because it's too drowned in ithim. Meaning worship cannot come into it because of ithim, because of sin. We all have legitimate grievances. We all have people that have legitimately hurt us. We all have people that have legitimately wronged us. We all are surrounded by injustices and all of us in some way are guilty of injustice ourselves to somebody else. Even if it's just by silence or by, by being complacent in injustice towards someone else. The idea here is not to rectify those wrongs in society. Allah teaches us to rectify those wrongs in society, to rectify those wrongs in our lives. But don't let it mess up your heart. Because if your heart is impure, there's no way your tongue is going to stay truthful. And if your heart is impure and your tongue is not truthful, then what does that say about the rest of your actions? And what does that mean when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah purify our hearts, make them ready for Ramadan. Make them ready to encompass all of those things that Ramadan teaches us to encompass. May Allah make our hearts saturated with taqwa, saturated with piety and remove anything from it that would take away from that taqwa. May Allah purify our tongues and let them be ready and prepared for the remembrances, the tasbih, the dhikr, the glorification and praise of Allah in Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow that to be the case with all of our actions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at all of our actions in the capacity of His mercy, not in the capacity of their performance. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa nisa'ala muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu wa lakum.